The movie opens with a fishing boat captain named Baker Dill, who is sailing on Plymouth Island with his sailor Duke. Accompanying them are two patrons eager to partake in the maritime adventure. However, Baker is so obsessed with catching an evasive giant yellowfin tuna that he denies the customers the opportunity to handle the fishing rod. When the customers insist, Baker gets aggressive and pulls out a knife, threatening them to stay away. As a result of this, the patrons refuse to make any payment. Adding to the setback, Baker once again fails to catch the elusive of fish. All of this is observed by a guy named Reed from a distance, who then crosses the water in a suit to meet Baker. However, his effort proves futile, as he isn't noticed by Baker. After the unsuccessful fishing trip, the customers leave without paying, causing concern for Duke regarding his compensation. Nonetheless, Baker knows where he can get the money. He then goes to his female friend Constance, and after spending some intimate time together, she lends him the money he needs. Before parting ways, he asks about Constance's son, as he's thinking of replacing Duke with him. Later on, Baker visits a bar owned by a guy named Jack and shares details about the elusive yellow fin tuna, which he refers to as Justice. Through their conversation, we learn that it's his fourth unsuccessful attempt to catch this fish. Afterwards, Baker goes to pay Duke and instructs him to arrive early the next morning. He also mentions that they won't be taking any customers this time. Duke doesn't think it's a good idea to waste gas on a leisure trip when they're already short on cash, but Baker doesn't seem to care. As night falls, Baker drinks alone while reminiscing reminiscing about his son Patrick and the memories they had spent together in the past. Simultaneously, Patrick, who is currently at his mother's home, gazes at a photo of himself and his father, cherishing the same memories. The following morning, Baker and Duke set off for their sail, unaware that Reed is watching from a passing bus. Despite spending an entire day at the sea, they find no sign of justice and are compelled to return empty-handed again. Baker vents his frustration on Duke, blaming him for bringing misfortune since his wife's passing. This accusation fills Duke with anger prompting him to walk away without a retort. Later in the evening, Baker heads to Jack's bar to have a drink. While there, the latter advises him to see a therapist, citing concerns about his behavior with customers and his relentless obsession with justice. However, Baker simply brushes it off. Amidst their conversation, he is unexpectedly approached by his ex-wife, Karen, who requests a private conversation. Baker takes her to his boat, after which she tells him about the abusive nature of her current husband, Frank. She reveals that he is constantly tormenting her and Patrick. She then addresses Baker by his real name, John, highlighting his military background and past achievements. Upon hearing her problems, Baker suggests getting a divorce, but she claims that escaping is not an option due to Frank's influential connections. Furthermore, she tells him about Patrick's fear during their fights and how he uses video games as a distraction. Karen also clarifies that she's asking for his help just to save Patrick. If Patrick has video games, he doesn't need saving. She then reveals her intention to organize a sailing trip on Baker's boat. She offers him $10 million in exchange for getting Frank drunk and throwing him to the sharks. However, he is uninterested in such a drastic scheme, so he asks her to leave. Meanwhile, Reed rushes toward the dock in an attempt to meet Baker, but it's too late as he sails away. In the morning, Baker returns home with a lot of fish to sell, only to find Constance waiting for him there. She expresses curiosity about Karen after overhearing their conversation the previous night. However, Baker opts not to disclose anything, and goes for a swim instead. As soon as he dives into the ocean, he starts hearing voices of Karen's husband yelling at her and Patrick. Baker also has a vision of his son swimming beside him, but when he attempts to reach out, he abruptly wakes up at his home's table, sensing the wet surface. Simultaneously, Patrick comes out of his blanket after his gaming session and discovers spilled water on his desk. This indicates that there is a mysterious connection between them. Either that, or they're both just having wet dreams, like father like son, on the same same day, Frank arrives at the island, surprising Karen while she's in the bathroom. Wasting no time, he instructs her to remove her bathrobe so that he can inspect her body. When he finds a little scratch, he takes off his belt to punish her. In the next scene, Baker heads to a fishing store owned by a woman named Lois. He is here to settle his debts and purchase some new hooks. Lois tells him that the entire island is aware of Karen's suffering from Frank's abusive behavior. She also mentions Reed's search for him, but he leaves without paying much attention. Upon reaching the dock, Baker finds Karen and Frank already waiting for him. Despite Frank's insistence on joining the planned fishing trip, Baker declines, citing the absence of a sailor and emphasizing emphasizing that it goes against regulations. However, Frank believes that everything has a price and promises to return the next morning for the trip. Before departing, he reveals his gun and instructs Baker to be there before him. Undeterred by this, our hero sets sail once more in pursuit of justice. Just then, Reed arrives at the dock but misses him again. <laughs> 
Reed sucks. Upon checking his watch, he discovers a 20 second discrepancy in his allotted schedule. Baker's quest for justice remains unsuccessful, but he manages to catch some valuable stuff to sell at the market. He then spends the night with Constance, who presents him with a moral dilemma, saving a woman or catching the elusive tuna. However, Baker completely ignores her and heads to the market the next morning. There, Duke approaches him. Having heard about the $10 million offer for the fishing trip, he emphasizes the urgent need for money to help his grandson and refurbish their boat, Serenity. Recognizing this as a very good opportunity, Baker finally agrees to take Frank on the trip. Following this, the two go to the dock, where Frank and Karen have already arrived. Baker privately informs her that he'll only take Frank fishing and do nothing more. Karen still attempts to change his mind by describing how her husband harms their son. She also reveals that Patrick can hear them through his computer screen. Wait, what? That seemed important. But Baker is unfazed. He then proceeds on the sail with the other men. During the trip, Frank starts talking about his stepson. He addresses Patrick as creepy because the boy always stays in his room playing video games and shows no interest in other sports. Their conversation is suddenly interrupted when a shark takes the bait and Baker allows Frank to reel it in. In the process, the latter slips on the deck but manages to recover safely. In the next scene, they make their way back to the dock and Karen appears disappointed to see her husband again. She speaks with Baker in private, presenting him with the same offer as Frank will want to fish again. She also asserts that it is Patrick's idea, so he should do it for the sake of their son. After they leave, Duke confronts Baker as he has heard their conversation. He asks about what's going on, and Baker reluctantly reveals the entire story. Upon learning everything, Duke reminds him of his inherent goodness, asserting that taking someone's life is not in his nature. Instead, he encourages him to keep focusing on the pursuit of justice. That night, Baker retreats to his boat to do some thinking. When Karen approaches him in the heavy rain, inside the boat, she reveals a ring Baker gave her at the age of 16, expressing that she hasn't forgotten him and that she's still the same girl she used to be. Their conversation eventually takes a romantic turn and they end up having coitus. During this, Baker notices bruises on her back and realizes that they're both damaged in different ways. As they're done, he says that he will accept her offer, but only if she brings Patrick to him. Karen thinks for a while and eventually agrees. Unfortunately, Frank is probably killing Patrick right this moment. Later, when Baker returns home, he finds Reed waiting for him. He introduces himself as a technical representative and head of regional sales of a fishing supply company named Fontaine. Baker wonders why he came at 2.30 in the morning, to which he explains that he tried to meet him numerous times during the day, but missed him every time. Reed, who is well aware of Baker's mission the next day, offers him a free trial of the newest sonic fish finder. He also discourages him from harm harming anyone. This alerts Baker, so he brandishes his knife and questions how he knows so much about him. Reed then reveals that he's just a participant in a game called Plymouth Island that offers various options. The creator's personal favorite among the options is fishing. The game's objective is to catch a specific fish, which aligns with Baker's obsession. However, Reed is perplexed about the altered rules, as the initial rule dictated that nobody dies in Plymouth. Baker then abruptly wakes up in his bed, unable to move until the alarm goes off. Upon getting up, he recalls his conversation with Reed the previous night. He then examines a couple of maps, only to discover that Plymouth Island is situated in the middle of nowhere. After this, Baker drives to a remote area in an attempt to communicate with Patrick, confessing his intention to harm Frank. He admits to having no recollection of memories, except for fishing with his son and lying down lifeless on the sand. His reflections are suddenly interrupted by Constance's son, Samson, who has left his previous job to work for him on the boat. Although Baker considers his presence as a positive sign, he refuses to grant him Duke's job because the rules have changed now. Following this, Baker proceeds to call Reed, but he's interrupted by Lois, who invites him into her shop. She presents him with a box of fishing supplies left by Reed as a complimentary sample. All of a sudden, Baker asks her about their location on Earth, but the latter is unable to answer this. Evading the question, she wishes him a good day and advises him to do what is right. When he seeks clarification on what is right for him, Lois simply urges him to go catch the fish. Baker then makes a brief call to the Fontaine office to verify their authenticity, but he quickly hangs up after expressing his gratitude. Later, he meets with Jack and bombards him with several questions. However, the latter doesn't know how to answer them either, confirming that they're all NPCs. Here, it's revealed that the entire movie is depicting the gaming world created by Patrick in remembrance of his father. Turns out that Baker was actually killed in action, after which his wife married Frank. Why Patrick 
Eric programmed his shithead stepdad into this game is anyone's guess. Meanwhile, in the hotel room, Karen discovers that someone has attacked Frank, causing him to bleed. Despite his injury, she still encourages him to go fishing, even offering to join him for assistance. On the boat, Duke reveals that he has paid some thugs to harm Frank. He has done this to rescue Baker from his temptation. However, this only enrages our guy and ends up kicking Duke off of his boat. Afterwards, he comes across Reed, who inquires if he knows the creator of the game. Baker knows it's Patrick, but he says that it's a boy who is wishing to reunite with his father. In the next scene, he makes his way to his boat, where Karen and Frank are already waiting. They then get on board and start preparing for the trip. Later, as Baker and Karen are strategizing their plan, Samson unexpectedly appears on the boat, surprising them both. This complicates matters, as pushing Frank into the ocean with the boy watching is no longer an option. Moments later, Samson loudly announces the capture of a large fish on their bait. When Baker hurries to handle the fishing rod, he realizes that it's Justice, the one he has been obsessed with. Despite this, he takes this as an opportunity to execute their plan and hands the rod to Frank. The boy, who is too weak to handle the powerful fish, is pulled into the water. He is tragically killed, but his death is made to look like an accident. Simultaneously, Patrick hears Frank yelling at Karen, prompting him to leave his room with his father's knife. A few moments later, he returns with blood on his hands. Following this, the news of Patrick stabbing his stepfather in the chest spreads throughout the country. Karen delivers an explanation, stating that Patrick acted in self-defense. She also reveals that they have been victims of domestic abuse ever since Patrick's biological father was killed in action. Back on the island, as Karen prepares to leave, she tells Baker that both she and Patrick love him. She also assures him that he'll be able to reunite with his son one day. Shortly after her departure, Baker answers a call at a phone booth and speaks to Patrick, who confesses his actions and promises to alter the game so that they can meet. As soon as the call ends, Baker notices that the environment around him is starting to change. Not long after, Patrick is seen running toward his father. Finally, the two have a joyful reunion, and the movie ends as they sail into the sea for a fishing expedition. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.